Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and it's finally here. The long awaited title from CG Project Red Cyberpunk 2077. Now, I typically don't cover game launches or do content on an individual game, but the combination of the long awaited hype around this game combined with the current unavailability of new consoles and PC hardware, I thought I'd test the game on the older hardware a lot of you guys are probably still using. Either because it's you just can't afford to upgrade or you can but you can't find the components you want. So the plan, well, I have a bunch of systems and hardware and I'm going to test the game to see what it takes to make it playable. So let me restate that. This isn't going to be a bunch of benchmark charts and graphs showing the FPS for each system at 1440p and at 1080p high or ultra presets. Those types of review are great and I'm sure there are a ton of them out there. My goal is to see what graphic settings it takes to get the game to a consistent 60 frames per second at 1080p for each system I test on because that's the goal. It's, it just is for almost 90% of PC gamers. My goal is to give you an idea if it's worth dropping the 60 bucks for the game with the system you're running. Okay, so quickly the systems. First, I have a pile of CPUs over here and I will be testing on both Intel and Ryzen CPUs. My prediction is that the CPU isn't going to be a huge factor for this game. The game is built on the updated Red Engine, but the Red Engine has never been a huge CPU hog. In fact, it's a lot like traditional game engines that mostly rely on single core performance. So I mostly have a bunch of four core or four core eight thread CPUs because, well, over 85% of you, the PC gamer population, game on four core systems. Now, I will do some CPU scaling testing with some six and eight core processors too, just to see how much the game can take advantage of additional cores. And finally, the single component that will make or break this game, the GPU. So on hand, I have a few lower to mid-ish range GPUs from an RX 584 gigabyte to this vanilla GTX 1660 to an RX 5700 up to an RTX 2080 Ti, which I'll just be using for CPU and memory and memory scaling testing. Now, in addition to these, I've used my phone a friend lifelines for this one. So some of my friends who are PC gamers are contributing their stats, which I'll be including in the results. My buddy with the GTX 980 system has already texted me and said the game has brought his system to its knees. I'm not sure I haven't got the numbers yet, but that doesn't sound good. I'll also be getting some GTX 1070, some RX 5700 XT, and maybe some 5500 XT. Not sure I haven't heard back, but the GTX 660 data should be close to that anyway. But that's the plan of action, and I'll start with my son's gaming PC, which is rocking an Intel Core i5-7400, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 2666, and a 4 gigabyte RX 580. This was one of the top selling pre-bolts on Amazon in 2017. I know that because that's how the internals of this PC actually started its life. This should give us a pretty good idea of where we need to start as far as settings for a playable 1080p experience. So let me get this hooked up and as a note, I will be capturing the video externally with my main system. So no added demand on the test systems. Also for all the hardware changes, the constant will be the 960 EVO NVMe SSD with an optimized Windows installed in the game files. I'll also be running the same mission with every system for as close to an apples to apples comparison as I can as this game doesn't have a built-in benchmark. There will also be a DDU driver uninstall and new install when switching from AMD to NVIDIA GPUs.
But that's it. Let's get into gaming. So the section I'm testing is called the rescue and I got this far on my main gaming rig. So when I switched to the RX 580 rig, I started off overly optimistic and went for medium presets, tweaking a few settings to get to what I thought would be close to 60 FPS. But here you see the first huge disadvantage of the RX 580 with only four gigabytes of VRAM, the textures take an eternity to load. And you can immediately see that we're not gonna make 60 FPS. So let's go back and just go straight to low presets. Now this looks, well, it doesn't look great, but the FPS is better, but still borderline, and we already see it's dipping below 60 FPS with the RX 580 maxed, and the relatively slow 7400 by today's standards is having to tax at least three of the cores to make up for the 3.3 to 3.4 gigahertz clock speed, but technically not a CPU bottleneck. This system is definitely GPU bound, but that can change as we get into some action. So even at all low settings, it looks like we're not gonna maintain 60 FPS, but let's see how bad it gets. And I selected this mission for testing because this first person combat is where I really want good FPS. If the FPS dips when I'm out walking or driving around the open world, and it will because of the extended draw distances, don't really mind as long as it doesn't get choppy. I don't want a slideshow, but here in the thick of things, I want a higher FPS. and I'm not getting it. And now we can see as the AI demand picks up, we can start to see a CPU bottleneck too. The GPU usage drops because it's basically waiting on the CPU to render the frames. So we have a double whammy with this system. I did go back and set the field to view as low as it would go. This was the only setting left I could lower, but that didn't make any difference. So essentially 1080p 60 FPS is not doable. I wouldn't call the game unplayable, but that's a call you'd have to make. To finish the testing off, I bit the bullet and dropped the resolution to 900p. So now at 900p, lowest of the low presets, the game looks not great compared to how it could look, but we have the coveted 60 FPS. Let's skip ahead to the firefight. And we got through that much better. Looks like our average FPS is about 67. So 60 FPS is possible on this almost four year old system, but not at 1080p. Let's move on to our next system, which is the GTX 1660 paired with a four core, eight thread Intel i3-10100 and 16 gigabytes of 2666 megahertz memory. And I went in swinging again at 1080p medium presets. Now, the CPU frequency isn't showing up here for some reason, but the 10100 does have a turbo boost of 
4.3 gigahertz. However, it tends to stay around 4.1 during gameplay. We can see here that the game does take advantage of multi-threading, which is good because for the most part it keeps the overall CPU usage generally below 50%. It does spike up to the high 70s in the thick of battle, but the GPU stays maxed at 97%, so everything is working as it should, and gameplay was super smooth. There were no huge spikes in frame time. We maintained about a 64 FPS average, and even 1% lows were 51 FPS. We had room to spare with the 6 gigabytes of VRAM, and the system memory stayed below 7 gigabytes, so... Overall, I would say this is a solid system for 1080p 60fps gameplay. I was actually a little impressed, so I went back and tweaked some visual settings, turned on focal lighting, kicked up ambient inclusion to medium, and level of detail to high. And jumping into combat, you can see the frame rate didn't take a huge hit, but the brightness and detailed from just a few settings is better, especially the brightness. The non-ray traced ambient inclusion used in this game is really good. So good I wasn't paying attention and took a grenade launcher to the face. That red overlay does hit my FPS a bit, so don't get shot. Like, always good advice. But even with that, I still averaged over 60 FPS, and again, it was a very smooth experience. Okay, the next system is an RX 5700 non-XT with a Ryzen 3 3300X, another 4-core 8-thread CPU, but this one boosts to 4.4 GHz and just stays there. It's an awesome little CPU, and you actually still have a chance to get your hands on this one, so check out my video from a couple weeks ago for details on that giveaway. Anyway, for this, I went straight to high presets, but I turned off film grain and motion blur because, well, I, I just don't like those effects. And right off the bat, things look good. Frame rate looks great, still GPU bound, and the improved CPU speed is allowing the game to lean more on single core performance and less on multi-threading. Straight into combat, and again, stats look good, and so does the game. Again, we stayed GPU bound. This CPU didn't jump above like 42, 43% usage, I think. And our average frame rate was above 70. So there's actually some room to go back and try for ultra settings with a few tweaks. And we'll just super speed to the end. And again, though we did get some dips below 60 FPS along the way, you honestly don't notice dips into the 50s in this game and our average was still 62 fps so that was the three systems i tested let's talk about the phone of friend systems first my buddy with a gtx 980 4 gigabyte and a ryzen 1600 16 gigabytes of ddr for 3000 megahertz cl16 memory like the RX 580 system I tested, was not able to maintain 60 FPS at 1080p lowest settings. He said his FPS stayed in the 40s to 50s and was kind of all over the place. He was able to average almost 70 FPS at 720p, which sounds bad, but he plays on a 1080p monitor, so that 720p would look better than the 900p I dropped to on my 4K monitor. Just because of pixel density, but that's a whole other video to explain, but most of you probably get it. Anyway, my buddy Gary has a GTX 1070 with an i5 4670K at 4.5 gigahertz, so a four core Haswell chip and 32 gigs of 2400 megahertz memory, and he was able to maintain 1080p 62 FPS with a mix of medium and low settings and high level of detail. 
He's going to send me a screenshot of his exact settings, but it sounds like it pretty much on par with the GTX 1660 system I tested. Finally, my son-in-law, who built the arguably best price-to-performance gaming PC of last year, sent me some numbers from his RX 5700 XT Ryzen 5 3600 system, and I wanted to know if his system could do 1440p at 60 FPS, and it couldn't. Not at ultra or high anyway. It came close with 55 FPS average at high presets and only 47 FPS at ultra, but couldn't do 60 without dropping settings to medium or low. And at that point, it's just better to go with 1080p as he was able to average 75 FPS at 1080p ultra. Now, I said I was going to do some CPU scaling and I will, but I didn't because, well, embarrassingly I ran out of thermal paste you can't imagine how much thermal paste you go through while benchmarking but I did run the mission with the same RX 5700 but with a Ryzen 7 3700X and slightly faster memory and here the CPU boost clock varies more and is a little lower than the 3300X but if you watch the individual core usage, you can see the game is almost completely dependent on single core performance using around 70-ish percent of single core and just spreading some less taxing subroutines to other cores using almost no hyper-threading. The overall CPU use is just slightly lower than the 3300X with half the cores and threads and ultimately this resulted in the same exact average FPS. So again, I'll do some more testing and I'll probably just post the results up on a community post. So make sure you get subscribed if you wanna see that. But with just the limited testing I did, I can pretty safely say that a decently fast four core, eight thread CPU is plenty good for this game. A slower four core CPU is not ideal, but it works okay especially if you have a low-end GPU but the faster the four cores the better basically from what I saw if you have a CPU with a high single core performance the game will use that if your single core performance is a little lacking the game engine will spread the workload out to the cores and threads you do have ultimately this is a GPU dependent game and that is where you'll see the biggest gains or losses. So basically anything below an RX 590 or a GTX 1070 or a GTX 1060, I'm inferring that just because I know how it compares with a 1070, but below those isn't good for 1080p 60 FPS gaming. Now with that said, I know the goal is 60 FPS and I can already see the spears from the PC master race being thrown at me for saying this, but 60 FPS isn't really necessary for this game. It essentially plays like a console port and even the combat is slow enough for FPS averages in the 40s or even below, which is very achievable on lower end hardware. I mean, it's just a single player game at the moment. The only real limit I saw and showed you was VRAM. You will see some lags due to texture mapping with anything less than four gigabytes of VRAM. But if you're rocking a three or four year old gaming PC and wanna play Cyberpunk 2077 and you're not super interested in all the eye candy that RTX and DLSS can add to the game, then you're, you're good to go. Have fun. If you do want the ultimate visual experience that this game can provide, then you'll need to wait until you can get your hands on the appropriate hardware for that job because even with my 2080 Ti at 1440p high settings, RTX on high, the game turned into a slideshow without DLSS on. DLSS works great in this game, but that's a video other creators will and probably have done. For me, I'm done testing the game and I just want to relax and enjoy playing it now. As always, I hope you learned something. That is why I do what I do. If you're still here, you obviously liked it, so make sure you click that like. 
And I hope to see you in the next one, which I actually have to finish shooting and start editing right now, so no cyberpunk for me.